Hi, I'm Michael Voris. Before today's episode, I'd like to invite you to please check out our website at churchmilton.com. We cover the latest Catholic news happening all over the world, and don't forget to check out our premium channel with hundreds of hours of apologetics, catechesis, church history, stories of saints, and a whole lot more. We've received countless testimonies that because of shows such as The One True Faith or Basic Training or Case Files, that people have grown such a deeper love for God and His Holy Church. I'd like to invite you to visit our site and learn as much as you can. Keep us in your prayers and we'll do the same for you. Enjoy today's episode of The Vortex and we'll see you at churchmilton.com. God love you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Early in the days of the apostolate here, Father Pablo Straub, God rest his soul, was a close friend, a confidant, and a counselor for us. One day, when some news was emerging about some corruption of doctrine here or there in the church, he looked at me and said directly, Michael, when the liberals show up, the games begin. Boy, did he nail that. What he meant was, you can't trust them. They're always angling for something other than what appears to be the case. They've always got some hidden agenda other than what they are talking about. So they play games, mind games, political games, all sorts of games to win. A week or so ago, the Bishop of Tucson, Edward Weisenberger, did a little soft shoe around statements he had made earlier in the month at the bishop's semi-annual meeting in Fort Lauderdale. At that meeting, he raised the question of invoking canonical penalties against Catholics who are involved in either legislation or enforcement of existing laws surrounding illegal immigration and the issue of separating children from adults, sometimes their parents, other times merely posing to be their parents. A flood of rightly deserved criticism came from every direction at the bishop, thus prompting him to release a <clears throat> clarification statement, which is just as flawed and misleading as his original thoughts expressed in Fort Lauderdale. We're going to look at his comments and explore what he did not say or reference, which causes his whole release to fall flat on its face as far as faithful Catholics are concerned. First, nowhere does the bishop reference or admit the point that the immigrants are breaking the law. He refuses to use the term illegal immigrants and prefers the political leftist's vague term of just immigrant. There is a huge difference between illegal and legal immigrants. One plays by the rules and went through the process. The other did not. Does the bishop himself just let anyone walk into his house or office unannounced? Or does he have them first vetted? So to lump both into the same bland, generic description of immigrant does a great disservice to those who played by the rules. Nowhere does he reference in his document that many times the adults with the children are not their parents, but human traffickers and drug gang members who are using the little ones as pawns to game the system. That was the reason, the whole reason, in fact, that the original law was written to get the children away from such adults who oftentimes sexually abused the children and still do. In a striking departure from the opinion of a majority of Americans, nowhere does the bishop say that the parents, if and when they actually are the parents, are responsible. They brought these children across dangerous open country, hundreds of miles, knowing that they were going to be in a position that, if captured, they would lose control of their children. So how about it, Bishop? Do they have any responsibility or blame in this? Any? Whatsoever? You never talk about that. There are other things the bishop completely fails to mention. Perhaps the most egregious and the one that's stuck in the craws of almost every Catholic worth his weight in salt, the complete hypocrisy and even threatening to level any penalties against Catholics involved in this, and the complete silence regarding the actual murder of children by Catholic politicians. He uses abortion as an example of being something being legal but immoral but never calls for its abolition or, more to the point, canonical penalties leveled against the very Catholic men and women who have for nearly half a century been responsible for abortion achieving such an exalted legal status. And that point will be made further during the upcoming Supreme Court confirmation hearings when Catholic and name-only senators will sit there and grill the nominee and posture for the cameras over the sacred right to abortion being threatened. Will the bishops get together and do their barnyard dance then, denouncing attacks against pro-life nominees by subversive Catholic pro-aborts? 
That he can't see the sheer idiocy of his logic in this regard is frightening in the least. He also fails to mention that the bishop's social justice agencies, as well as a good number of individual dioceses, receive rather large sums of money from the federal government to address the illegal immigration issue. Now, to extend some benefit of the doubt to His Excellency, perhaps all he wanted to do was confine his clarification to the question of penalties, canon law penalties. Okay, fair enough. But see, he doesn't get to do that. He opened this can of worms by raising the possibility, out loud with other bishops, of going after Catholic lawmakers or immigration workers. Given the lack of credibility of the bishops in so many, many areas of their duties, where they have demonstrated a massive dereliction of duty time and time again, he couldn't seriously expect that all of this would not be considered fair game, could he? How, given the climate of abortion and what the Pope himself has labeled a throwaway culture, could you not give even a mention of the need to go after pro-abortion Catholic politicos? Surely they have without a doubt or hesitation brought more death than any U.S. government policy regarding illegal border crossings. Yet Catholic ice workers draw your ire and Catholic child killers get a pass. You and your fellow Democrats in robes at the Bishops' Conference are not being paid attention to by Catholics who care about the Church because of your willful blindness. You would be well advised to issue yet another clarification about using the weight of canon law against child killer Catholics, but we won't wait for that anytime soon. The same party that sanctions the child killing is the same one who hands all of you money in your social justice swamp that you wallow in. Perhaps is the most disturbing is the tone of all of this from not just Weisenberger, but the Conference of American Bishops as a whole. They go to great lengths to make it seem like they speak authoritatively on this question. They do not. They demonize those who call out their imprudent prudential judgments. They moralize over the gnat and swallow the proverbial camel. And they make money from the people they will not denounce. Indeed, when the liberals show up, <laughs> The games begin. God love you. I'm Michael Boris. Hello, Militant. If you were silently nodding your head to today's Vortex episode, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to check out our website at churchmilitant.com. We keep up to date with all the latest in the Catholic world and also have loads of one-of-a-kind Catholic videos covering everything from church history to apologetics. Countless people have told us how much our work has helped them to become more faithful Catholics. So please follow our social media channels as well. The links are right below. Hope to see you tomorrow for The Vortex and much more. Thanks, and may God bless you.